Pray again before we leave tonight. And like I say, you know, we have to have the want to down in our soul to go to the house of God. And when it's, um, we don't have a lot of people here, but uh, hopefully Thursday night, Bill, some of them will be back and just come back at me with us. And also on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, we have prayer here from 1 till 2, or as long as you want to pray. And come out and be with us. Uh, there was no men here last time. I believe Crystal was here. But uh, women came, and we thank God for that. Come and pray. And that's what we need in this day and time that we're living in. We need prayer. That's what people's filled in, is prayer. And so tonight, I, um, we, I hope I can see here. We have to turn these lights off up here, and we'll get it all fixed up. But anyway, in your Bible, if you will go to 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, and beginning at about the 3rd verse. And I'd like to pray over God's word tonight. And then just stay and pray over God's word for us. Jesus. Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for another time to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask you, Lord, to just anoint it. And let us understand what you're trying to tell us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' precious name. As we are growing older and we're having a lot of younger people coming into the church, I believe in 1 Peter, it says uh, 5 and 3, it says, Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being, we're supposed to be in set examples to the flock. Now that's, the older ones that's been in the church for a long time, we need to be an example to the younger ones that come in. So they'll not only, they will see what, how we live and what we do and read the Word of God. You have to read the Word of God daily. And so then, uh, going down to um, 4, and when the chief, uh, chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud, and gives grace to the humble. Now, as, we're, as this is teaching us here, um, then we'll just read this. When you humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now we have to humble ourselves down. Uh, we have to come under uh, God's rules and regulations. And then a lot of times we think we can't do anything in the church. But if we will be meek and humble before God and ask Him to use us, help us to do what we're supposed to do. If we're humble, if we have haughty spirits, you know that means people just think they know it all, they won't listen to anything, they know it all. God can't use people like that because they eventually think they know more than God does. But we need to come humble. Have you ever seen some people that is so humble that you don't even know how they take things because they're so humble? But they pray and God helps them because it says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God and He'll exalt you. He's the one that exalts us. We don't need to exalt ourselves. And say, so we know, oh, we can do this, and we can do that, and we can do everything. But God is the one that helps us to do things for Him. And you can go on, Christopher. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. How many trials and troubles, and you see everything that's coming away. And I know my brother mentioned something about. It sounds like when people was telling you today, it's just all gloom and doom. But what uh, it's all about today is we are in the end time. But we've got a God that's going to take care of us. And when we have problems in our home, if we have problems in our marriages, if we have problems with finances, if we have problems with a lot of things, we can ask God. And that's care if we cast all of that upon Him. Because we're not big enough to take care of that. When things come, we just cannot deal with it sometimes. We're hurt so bad 
that we can't deal with it. But we have to be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now you've heard the lions roar. I wish we had something tonight that it just showed you how they roar out. Now that is the way that the enemy can use. They're out there, and the devil, that a lot of people go, oh, that's just, that's old fables, that stuff you tell. How could there be anything like that? Yes, there is. There is things out there, and he roars like a, like a lion, and he walks among us, and he's seeking whom he may devour. And it's like this one way. Maybe the Lord will say, well, let's go to church today. Come on now, let's go to church. Maybe he's got that in your mind. And then the next thing you know, when we hear something, say, you don't want to go there. They don't have anybody up there. You don't want to go there. What's the need going there? Well, you could go do this, or you could do, go do that. But God is really dealing with you. And I say, always listen to God. Don't ever, ever, ever listen to Satan. Because he's going to lead you into destruction. And that's why he hurts for it. But it's a glorious thing in serving God. I have served God for many years. And I've had many, many happy times. Many happy times. When I get ready to come to the house of the Lord, it's a happy time for me. It's not a grudgy time. Oh, I gotta get ready, I gotta go, and, and I gotta come across the bridge and get over here and gotta get in that traffic and all this stuff. That's not. I'm gonna come on if I am in all kinds of traffic. I'm gonna get to the house of God because I can feel something. I can feel something in the Lord when I get here, and I love that feeling that I can feel when I get to the house of God. And I go on, Brother Christopher. Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world? Now, there's a lot of things that comes that we have to put up with. Some people in the world, they have to put up with things. Sometimes there's things we have to put up with, and it's not very good. I mean, sometimes there's things that hits us, and some things we say, Lord, if we can get through this trial, then we'll be getting ready for the next one. And it's not, but it's a glorious hallelujah thing to serve God. Just to think that when you're going through something, uh, when you don't have uh, a whole lot of the elderly saints, when they didn't even have money to pay their electric bill, they didn't have that, they just put it all in God's hands. And today we worry about that differently, but you put it in God's hands because you've got a God that's going to help you. You've got to believe Him, got to have faith in Him, that He is going to help you get through all of this. And He certainly will. And as I, as I tell them, there's two times in my life that I know that I have really had faith. And faith is a great thing to have. Sometimes it's hard to get, but when you get to a place that you can't do anything about anything, then your faith is gonna come in and you're gonna have to lean on that faith because you know you can't do this. You know the doctors can't do that. They've done give up on you. So you know that there's a greater power and God is the one you're going to have to lean on to. And that's where the faith comes. And I believe it was the time, I've told this many times, but I always love to tell it, how that God healed me of that terrible, terrible disease, Crohn's disease. And I remember my faith in God really brought me through that. And God healed me of that. They couldn't do anything, just relieve the pain. The doctors couldn't do anything. But God is a healer. And we've got to trust in God in the time that we're living in. Then the other time, when, the other day, there was so much going off, and it just seemed like God said, didn't I do this for you? And that's concerning my brother. When he told me I, he was on his way, he was dying. He said, since I was dying, I didn't know if I'd make it to the hospital. And I believe that's what my other brother confirmed when he called. But look what God did for him. He brought him out of that. My Lord have mercy. That was a miracle. That was a miracle. God is a great God, Sister Sherlam. 
God is a great God, and he'll take care of us. He'll put that one two to be in the house of God. He'll put that one two to get out and pray. He'll help us, but we got to look up to him and say, Lord, I believe you, Jesus. I know God somewhere in this universe. Somewhere you are hearing me, Jesus. But then, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ, Jesus. After that, you have suffered a while. Sometimes we have to suffer. He'll make you perfect. He'll establish you. He'll strengthen you. And he'll set you. God does all. Everything God does for us is good. It's good. And he'll make a way for you when there seems to be no way. And I know God's made a way for me. Sometimes we only know by experience what all that God can do for us. If I would ask you tonight, if some of you would stand up and say, what has God really done for you? Somewhere, something in there is going to say, yeah, I can remember when God did this for me. When he helped me out of this, I wouldn't have made it without him. But I do know that God is real. I know that God is real. But Christopher, go on if we have some more there, honey. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. But I think, Christopher, um, if we're going down to um, five, six, do um, First Peter, I see it's six. I believe it is six. Five and six, have you done that yet? Somewhere we've not got one. We've done already did that. Um, we've already had that, but now come on down, honey. On down. We've already did this. Somewhere we've uh, missed it. But here's what I was wanting to read. Um, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, we don't uh, read that, who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered well, make you perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. I think tonight we have a wonderful, wonderful Savior. He's a great God. He's a great God tonight. And we get discouraged a lot of times. But leaning on the everlasting arm, we have Him. We have Him to lean on. When things are really looking bad sometimes, and then God brings us through all these trials, how good it is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We know there is a God. We know what he can do for us. And we know all we have to do is read his word. We read his word. And us older ones has to be examples for the younger ones as they come into the church. If they see we have a bad spirit, then some way that will get off on that. If they see if we're loving people, have you seen people that uh, some people doesn't have quite that sweet, humble spirit? And like Sister Linda after t often talks about uh, Maisie, she had a loving, sweet spirit. Now then we had our Aunt Flory was bold. She was a good woman, but she would tell you boldly. She boldly she would tell you. But Maisie was sweet. See, there's a difference. There's a difference. Some of the people are so sweet and so kind, and they wouldn't say anything to hurt you at all. Then we have some bold Christians that were just, they're bold. They're just bold people. They don't mean any harm, but they put it out in a bold way. So, but tonight, we have a Savior that loves you. He loves you, and in the time of trouble, He loves you. In the time when you're doing real good, He loves you. And God will always be with you. Always remember to pray. If you ever have anything that you want to know about, all you have to do is come and ask us for scripture and things, and we will help you with that and get the Bible for you and get 
what you want to know about it and help you through this time that we're living in. But it's a good life living for the Lord. God's good to us here on this earth. We still have a good time here until he comes. He said for us to uh, just work on till he comes and just keep on hanging on to Jesus. And tonight I do thank God. Aren't you glad tonight God is so real? God is so good. And we got so much to pray about tonight. And so much. But please pray. Pray through the week. Pray through the week. Read your Bible. Don't fail to read the Word of God. And if you want to take these scriptures and read over them, go ahead and write them down and always take them home with you and read them and see what God can tell you out of it. And a lot of times, for me, as a child coming up, I heard scripture after scripture after scripture. I can still today remember it, but I cannot remember exactly where the scripture and the verse is. And I think that is so awful for me, but I cannot. But I am so glad when one day as they said unto me, let us go to the house of Lord. I'm glad that all my life I wanted to serve him. I'm glad that's the way I wanted to go. It's not been an easy road all the way, but God was always with me. God always took good care of me, of me and my family, and I love the Lord tonight. And before we leave tonight, we're all going to come around and, and all pray together, pray for each other, pray for the saints that's not here tonight. God knows where they're at and what they're doing. I do know that.